Every now and then, you may find yourself dealing with a very, very big number. If that's the case, you can find yourself writing a number with just a whole lot of zeros in it, and keeping track of all those zeros and how many there are can get to be a real pain. Scientists have had to put up with this problem for years, and they've developed a special notation just for writing enormously huge or incredibly tiny numbers. This way of writing numbers is called scientific notation. Here's the kind of thing we use it for. Suppose you want to read or write this number. The first thing almost anyone would do is count up all those zeros. If you do that, you'll find that we have the digits 1, 2, 3, followed by 15 zeros. So that means if you want to type this in, you have to type 15 zeros, and you have to make sure you don't have an extra one, and you haven't left one out, and the whole thing is just kind of a mess. Here's a real example from real life. The mass of the Earth in grams is this number. Now, even if we write it down with commas between the groups of three, it's still a lot of zeros to count out. And when the computer prints out a number like this, it doesn't use commas. It would print it out like that. And it's just ridiculous to ask people to look at this number and have any idea of what it means. So we break it up the way we did before. We say it's the digits 598 followed by 25 zeros. Scientific notation is really just a way of writing down that information, but it's slightly changed. The scientific notation version of this is 5.98E27. That's a capital letter E in the middle, and that E tells us this is a special scientific notation format. In fact, if processing was to type out this number for you, it would use scientific notation. So this video is really about how to read scientific notation so you can figure out what numbers processing is showing you. This notation can be used to either write down enormous numbers like this one or numbers that are incredibly close to zero. Let's see an example. Here's a picture of some E. coli bacteria like you would find in your own gut. We can ask, what is the length of one of these bacteria? and I'm going to ask for its length in miles. Well, that's going to be an incredibly small number. It's almost zero, but not quite. Well, we can write down this tiny little number in scientific notation this way and avoid all of those zeros. At the other end of the spectrum, we have the Horsehead Nebula, a giant structure out in space. If we ask how tall is it in miles, it's this many miles tall. Again, who wants to deal with all those zeros? We would write it down this way. So now let's look at the process of turning one of these scientific notation things with an E in it back into a normal number. The traditional way to talk about scientific notation is to present the mathematics. But I think that that can actually make it look more complicated than it is. This is really nothing more than a little counting game with some rules. So I'll show you the rules for the counting game, and then we don't have to worry about all the weird math. Suppose that you have a variable and you work with it for a while, and you do some calculations, and then you print it out. And processing prints it out like this. Well, that's scientific notation. You're always going to see a single digit followed by a decimal point, then more digits, the letter E, and another number. So, okay, let's pull this apart. First, I'm going to separate things out so I can get at them more easily, and I'll start at the left of the decimal point. That's the number six. So let's make a little slot for it and copy it down. Now that we've handled things to the left of the decimal point, we'll handle the stuff to the right. And we'll begin all the way on the right-hand side with the number that comes after the E. In this case, a 7. Now we play the counting game, and we say we are going to create 7 slots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We'll fill them up in a second, but that's what the 7 is telling us. Make 7 placeholders. Now, in the first one, we're going to copy down the 2. And then we'll copy down the 8. And then we're going to fill in the rest of them with zeros. 
that's our number. If you want to see the number without all the boxes, we can just sort of gather it up together. And in traditional notation where we use commas, you can break it up with commas if you like. This number, 62,800,000, is the number in scientific notation at the top, 6.28E7. Let's take a look at the counting game for tiny, tiny numbers. It's very similar, but a little bit different. Suppose you print out the value of a variable, and you get this, 6.28E minus 6. Now, that minus is not doing subtraction. That's there is a little flag to tell us this number is a tiny, tiny little number. So like before, we'll break things up, but a little bit differently. I'll pull the 6.28 down to the right, and I'm going to move the E minus 6 off to the left. We'll get back to that in a second. Now we're going to start with the stuff to the right-hand side of the decimal point, the numbers 2 and 8. We'll copy them down to our final result and copy down the 2 and 8 as well. Now it's time for the counting game. We look to the number to the right of the E. It's minus 6. So, okay, we're going to create 6 slots, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, in front of the numbers we just counted down. And because it's a minus 6, I'm going to put a decimal point at the far left-hand edge. Okay, well, we still have the 6 to deal with, so let's copy the 6 straight down, and like before, fill in everything else with zeros. That's it. We're done with the process. If we want to write this number a little bit more clearly, we just string all the digits together. This number, 0 0.00000628, is identical to 6.28, E minus 6. I've illustrated both of these with positive numbers, but you can do this with negative numbers too. Let's take a look. Here's a number line. It runs from some huge negative value on the left to some huge positive value on the right. So let's take a look at some giant positive value. Suppose it's 1, 2, 3, and then just a whole bunch of zeros. Well, if we go through the process we saw before, we'll find that we could write this as 1.23E17. Let me warn you about something so you don't make a very common mistake. One way that people sometimes look at this is they think, oh, it's the digits 1, 2, 3, followed by 17 zeros. And that's not quite right. The right way to think about this is to look at the E and look at the number to its right. That's 17. Add to that the number of digits to the left of the decimal point. In this example, there's just one. That gives us 17 plus one or 18, telling us that this is an 18 digit number. Now suppose that we have an enormously negative number. Maybe it's minus one, two, three, zero, 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 some huge negative number. Well, we can write that in the very same way. We just put a minus sign in front, just like we put a minus sign in front of the number to indicate that it is negative. We can do the same thing for very tiny numbers. So now I'm zooming way in on that number line and let's pick a tiny number just a little bit to the right of zero. Maybe it's 0 0.00000123. Using the rules we saw before, we could write that as 1.23 E minus 13, where the minus sign is telling us that the zeros come before the other digits, not after. If the number is a tiny, tiny little negative number, like the same value but negative, well, we just stick a minus sign in front of the same thing, minus 1.23 e minus 13. If you're given one of these very, very big or very, very small numbers with all of the zeros, and you want to turn it into the scientific notation form, just use one of the two recipes we saw before, but run it in reverse. So now we've seen scientific notation. To measure the size of one bacterium in miles, we have this number, which we now know we can write 1.21 E minus nine. That's a much nicer way of writing it. We don't have to count up all the zeros. When we look at something enormous and we want to know how many miles tall it is, we can write it down this way with all of these ridiculous zeros, or we can write it in scientific notation. When you print out a number, 
and processing uses scientific notation, you know that number has a lot of zeros in it. If the number to the right of the E is positive, then you have lots of zeros after the digits to the left of the E, meaning you have a giant number. And if the number to the right of the E is negative, then you have lots of zeros before the digits to the left of the E, meaning you have a tiny, tiny little number. You can use the recipes in this video to convert any number into or back from scientific notation.